Hello, Alessandro. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. Good Excellent. to be back in London. Yeah. Um, so how's the tour been so far this year? Tour has been doing going great. Um, we've, we're about three or four weeks into the UK uh, to the Europe tour. Been in the UK for about a week. Yeah. Uh, shows have been going great. Um, crowds have been great. We have about another, let's see, three weeks of touring, more yes. or less, three or four weeks. And that's the rest of Europe. And that's that's it for Europe, and then we'll continue in the U.S. for the summer. Yeah. So, okay. so far, so good. Excellent. And welcome to my office. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, obviously, you've got a lot of modular gear here. Yeah. Um, I'm do you just give me an explanation of how your rig's set up, maybe, yeah. and how? Well, it's uh, there's several areas. The main, I mean, the area you got here is like the modular side, and there's two systems. I'm a big fan of. Uh, System, modular stuff seen as a as an instrument um, so I really like to keep manufacturers modules together and I try to do as much as I can uh, this is a new system by a friend of mine called Mark Verbos which started a company called Verbos Electronics and uh, it's uh, I like to describe it as a 50% Bukla and 50% techno inspired <laughs> it's uh, the closest that you're gonna get to, to the philosophy design philosophy and sound of a Bukla synthesizer, um, but also there's a lot of more of imme immediacy to it, especially in the sequencer, and in, just in, in the general way of how it works, it makes it very, very good for live work. It's just very hands-on and uh, very easy to use in an environment like a stage where there's not much that much light. And um, the make noise system is uh, another self-contained system um, where I get a clock, both of them get clocks basically, and all sequencers are clocked up with the songs at all times. And with the volume pedal, I'm, I'm able to bring them in or out uh, of the sequences. Uh, as far as the, the Verbo system goes, it's mostly doing FM percussive sounds, and then I do tune with a chromatic tuner, I tune the harmonic oscillator to a specific key and then use that for drones mostly by hand the make noise system has been around with it's been with me for a little longer uh, this has been uh, introduced in the Australian tour um, and, and so this has evolved a little bit now I have two Renes as opposed to having a touch plate a pressure point and a Rene one Rene is for sequences only and the other one is for stored voltages so each song I don't need to tune it and it's just as long as Justin my tech tunes the oscillator, then each song will have its own key. And uh, I use its own built-in echo a lot, just the echo phone designed by, uh, by Tom Merb and um, Anthony Rondo at uh, Make Noise. And then I run everything through a few pedals. The Great Destroyer when it comes to fuzz is a great uh, pedal, very easy to just change the sound with a few knobs uh, the timeline and the Strymon timeline and blue sky for delays and uh, reverbs and uh, as far as modular I think that's it I mean we could go much more in depth than as far as what each one does but I think within the context of what the rig is this is enough for now this is probably my favorite part of the the rig and it's a Tascam 4 track cassette recorder one of the latest ones um, I I, uh, during production, I started, um, you know, that's when I usually start playing with, with gear and see what works and what doesn't. And, and somehow for the song Hurt, I started, uh, I decided to make a logic session where the chords that are in the chorus, I could cut them so I would have four chords in four different tracks looped forever. And then I transferred those to cassette in order to have each one of those chords in one of the channels. So you play, you, you, you essentially play the mixer? The four, yeah, like you basically the, play the four progression, you know, the, four, yeah. the four chords, you play the progression by hand, basically. And it sounded so interesting and so cool uh, on its own that um, once I started putting effects on it and I started realizing that I could just make some of my Bloody Valentine-ish pitch changes just by barely touching the pitch wheel while I was playing and it just all of a sudden, it, it made uh, a part that was, you know, more static earlier, but still with a lot of personality, it's sort of given it a new life. And next thing you know, we had a rack of tapes right next to me, and you know, every, almost every song in the set has a cassette now. 
Uh, some of them are approached the same way as Hurt is, and some others as different parts of the song. So sometimes it's one sound, another sound, and for, for example, for Disappointed, it's uh, two stereo pairs, one with violins, highly quickly played violins, and this is octave guitars quickly strummed. So same pitch, and then with uh, the pitch wheel, I go from one note to another manually. So it's not synced in any way. It's oh just, no, never. It's just no. That would be. That's not. That's not <laughs> why we're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Even though sometimes I say, oh yeah, we run everything the click for the drummer from here. Right? People are like what? <laughs> exactly. And then uh, the OP1 is used uh, both as a sampler as in a synth. Uh, this is the list of songs that I use it on, um, and the presets. Since I can't, you know. I don't know if there's a way, we haven't really bothered seeing if there was a way to USB recall patches and it didn't really matter because there's not many songs where I use it, uh, so it's easy for me, you know, it's not more than seven, seven or eight patches, so it's fairly easy for me to do it by hand. And uh, it's a very interesting instrument, uh, I use it both as a sampler, as I said, and as a synth. One of the songs, Sanctified, I use it with its own built-in sequencer, seven-step sequence that it's with the BPM of the track. So it's just a matter of pressing that key at the right time and then everything should be in, in time. If it's not, I can always re-trigger it. Yeah. Uh, the pads are used for uh, percussive sounds, obviously, and they're connected to a Nord drum. Okay. And that's off stage? The off stage in the main rack, which we'll see in a second. All right, so this is our rack on the ground here. It's kind of a basic setup. There is a Army Fireface UFX that we use um, all the MIDI ports on. There's two in the front and two in the back, and 12 audio inputs. We have 12 audio channels coming from our stage box up there um, to connect to all of the gadgets and everything that's going on. Um, regular Motu MIDI interface, which is now just simply changing patches on the Nord drum that we use. Uh, that's what's connected up to the three drum pads above the tape machine up there. In main stage, we have pretty much every single song that the band is capable of playing available. So in the event that there's a last minute set list change or something like that, it's, it's always in here. We've kind of maxed out main stage to the furthest potential. We're just cramming the CPU and we're using a ton of plugins. Um, there's a lot of audio damage plugins, a lot of uh, Arturia stuff like the Prophet VS collection for some of our classic sounds, Contact, EXS24, a lot of stuff we've taken from multi-tracks from some of the old records and have laid out on the keyboard so we can play some of the classic Nine Inch Nails sounds. Um, the rest of the rig is uh, um, controlled, well the whole rig is controlled mostly by the Mastermind which changes the main stage patches. It's definitely deeper than how we use it. We mostly use it just to go back up and back down, which basically brings me down from in the order of the set list from one song to the other. And then whenever I'm on the song, next song, I press the first key and that gives me the Wretched, for example, is a song where I play guitar and I have three patches. I have uh, the intro patch and the chorus patch and verse two patch. And then depending on which part of the song I am, I switch it from here. But some of the songs where the, the change is very quick, I uh, I prepare it so I can just you know next thing I need to, the only thing I need to do is just press that. It's com it's not really conveniently located, but it's here just because I have to play bass and guitar in this lineup also, and it's a lot of fun. But it makes it hard to find a, a common ground for a controller because a lot of the songs I need to change there, and I'll, so I usually just step out, do my change, and then go back in. <laughs> um, then we have the Prophet 12, which is the main controller for all things. That, synthesizers are in the computer and not in a computer. I would say it's used for 60% of the sound generation. Uh, there are more tracks, but I'm not in the set list now. It's been with us since the, the production rehearsals, actually the pre-production, and it was also the pre-production of the Prophet 12. So we pretty much, I pretty much followed the, the beginnings of it. And uh, it was, I know Trent used it extensively in the studio also for the writing of um, hesitation marks it's a great instrument just you know as the voice of a of a dave smith instrument and uh, uh while at the same time being very modern sounding it's and this particular area here it's my favorite the character area i think should be a standalone thing it's just incredibly easy to come up as especially if you start assigning these to lfos or you know stuff that you can move 
just to come up with a very alive sounding so do you uh, do, patch. So do you do a lot of that like sort of knob twiddling on stage live or? No, uh, I do it with the modular. I don't do it with this stuff simply because the modular, I don't know, it seems like an environmental lens is soft that more than, I don't know why, but uh, probably because of the sounds. You know, I hardly ever do drones or textural rhythmic stuff with the Prophet. It's usually something that I leave to the modular. Therefore, the tweaking and the sort of like changing the release of a specific sequence live, I usually do it by hand, you know what I mean? And, uh, or on the Octatrack. The Octatrack, I do a lot of that also, just because on one fader, on one cross fader, I can assign so many settings that it makes it very easy. Probably the most creative instrument uh, they've, they've ever made, my favorite for sure, it's the Electron Octatrack. It's just uh, uh, the most innovative way of dealing with samples. So do you take samples from the original Pro Tools sessions? Yeah, like most of the times there's stuff like that. Sometimes there's stuff taken from other instruments that I had that I was using live in previous incarnations and I don't have any more but I still like the sound that I wanted to sort of change it a little bit and uh, I usually put it on the Octatrack and it's fairly easy to come up with something that has the same fabric material starting point but leads you somewhere else and makes you feel like you're not doing the same thing over and over and at the same time you're not just changing it just for the sake of it so it's a uh, it's a very cool instrument once you get a hold of you know the, the operating system and know how it works. Um, another favorite is the sound plane, which is directly connected to a plugin called Alto, the Buchla inspired synthesizer. Uh, I use it a lot like I used to use the French connection connected to an analog systems modular system back in the day. Uh, different main difference being that those drones now are polyphonic. I can use more than one finger. Uh, to create them, so it's a very expressive instrument. The other advantage is not being a keyboard playing individual, but being more of a guitar player, it's uh, much easier for me here to see fifths and octaves and whatnot. It, is, it just makes more sense. And it's a beautifully made instrument. Yeah, as well, they did a great it? job, and it's pressure yeah. sensitive and whatnot, yeah. you know. And it's great for sound design and, and for, uh, for drone. I mean, I'm a, a, dr a big drone fan. <laughs> the drummer. N named me Indiana Drones, which is actually, I love <laughs> it. I love it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Here. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and uh, good luck with the show tonight. Thank you. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye.